a beautiful aircraft, the Lockheed P-2 Neptune is among the unforgettable of the First Cold War. It played important roles in keeping the Soviet and Chinese navies under observation for the USA, and took place behind the scenes of historical events in naval battles for other countries. Between 1947 and 1996, more than 1,000 P-2 successfully fulfilled their duties on the seas and qualified to enter among legends. Now we are investigating the Neptune. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. The story of the development process of the P-2 Neptune goes back to the Second World War. In 1941, Vega, the subsidiary of Lockheed, started to design new land-based maritime patrol bomber. However, since the aircraft that were in production at that time were sufficient for this task, the urgent needs of the war were prioritized and not enough resources were allocated to the development efforts. So, the new aircraft, called the P-2V, made its first flight on May 17, 1945. Production began in 1946, and it was accepted into service in 1947. The Neptune was in constant development. The engine power, which was 2,300 horsepower in the first production model, was increased to 2,800 and 3,200 respectively in later versions. In the P2V4 version, renamed as the P2D, in 1967, whose anti-submarine warfare capability was increased, the same engine was initially preferred at first. While the latest production models were equipped with 3,250 horsepower engines, Different from its predecessor, this model had a search radar, provision for dropping sonar boys, and underwing tip tanks. The P-2V-5 had also new, larger, jettisonable tip tanks and a Rena PS-8 radar in nose of port tip tank in addition with Rena PS-20 search radar under fuselage. Later aircraft featured blazed observation nose and a magnetic anomaly detector, shortly MOD. With 424 units, the P-2V-5 became the most produced model of Neptune. Beginning with the P-2V-5F model, renamed as the P-2E, in 1967, the Neptune became one of the first operational aircraft fitted with both piston and jet engines. Generally, these two jet engines were run at full power to a shore takeoff, then shut down upon reaching a safe altitude. They were also started and kept running at flight idle during low altitude as a safety measure should one of the radial engines develop problems. The P-2V-6, redesignated as the P-2F in 1967, had lengthened weapons bay and provision for aerial mine laying and photo reconnaissance. The aircraft was equipped with a smaller radar. The P-2V-6B version could be equipped with two UMN-2 petrol anti-ship missiles which carried a passive acoustic homing torpedo as its payload. However, only 16 P-2V-6BS were produced because the US Navy found this weapon ineffective. The P-2V-7 was the second most produced Neptune model with 287 units. The US Navy changed the aircraft's designation in 1967 to P-2H. Depending on the model, Neptune had seven or nine crew members. The aircraft had nearly 28 meters length, 31.6 meters wingspan, and 9 meters height. Its empty weight was 22.65 tons, the maximum takeoff weight was 35.24 tons. Two 15.1 kN West Inkhouse J34 WE34 turbojets and two 3,700 horsepower Wright R3350 32W Cyclone Turbo Compound radial engines provided nearly 590 km per hour maximum speed. The cruise speed of the aircraft was about 335 km per hour. Its range is 3,540 km. The P-2 could climb to altitude of 6,827 meters. The Neptune could be equipped with nearly 3.5 tons ordnance including rockets, free-fall bombs, depth charges, and torpedoes. Different models of the Neptune had 12.7 mm machine guns or 20 mm guns inside the turret. In addition, there were 20 mm fixed nose gun on some versions. There were also modified P-2 variants for special missions. For example, the P-2 V-3C it was developed as carrier-based nuclear bomber. 
The heavy P-2V3C was using jet-assisted takeoff rocket boosters to take off. Yet it could not land on a carrier. Another modified Neptune, the truculent turtle flew non-stop from Perth, Australia to Ohio, the USA, in 1946, without air refueling. The flight of 18,083.6 kilometers lasted 55 hours 18 minutes. Until 1962, the longest flight record was broken by the B-52, truculent turtle had held the record. During the Vietnam War, the USA used four converted Neptune for night and all-weather ground attack mission. This model was called a P-2H. For CIA covert operations, seven Neptune-based RB-69A were produced. There were also several versions like the DP-2E and H version for drone launch missions, the unarmed TP-2F for pilot training, the LP-2J equipped with wheel ski landing gear and JRTO gear for Antarctic operations, and the EP-2H fitted with UHF telemetry equipment. Also, Japan company Kawasaki developed the P-2J variant for the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Forces as an alternative to buying the larger and more expensive P-3. This model had two 2,850 horsepower T-64 IHI 10 turboprop engine and two 13.7 kN J-3 IHI 7C booster turbojets which provided a top speed of 650 km per hour. The P-2 was preferred by Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, France, Japan, the Netherlands, Portugal, Taiwan, the UK, and the USA. According to U.S. Navy doctrine, the P-2 operated as the hunter of a hunter-killer group, with destroyers employed as killers. In this perspective, it was not an actual offensive system. The P-2 started its career as a maritime patrol aircraft, but for the first time it had combat experience as a bomber. When North Korea started an invasion on South Korea on June 25, 1950, the USA did not have enough combat aircraft in the region. That's why Peters had been stationed in Japan were used in bombing missions against North Korean troops in the early days of the war. Even though they returned to their real duties later in the Korean War, life was not easy for the Neptunes in this tense environment. In 1951, one US P-2V was shot down by the Soviet Levochin 11 fighters over international waters off Vladivostok. One year later, Soviet MiGs intercepted an early warning model P-2V-3W flew over Kamchatka. This time, the Russian acted cold-blooded and did not open fire on the aircraft. In 1953, China shot down a US P-2V was off Sueta in the Formosa Straits by anti-aircraft guns fire. The PBM-5, which came to rescue the crew, also crashed while trying to take off under intense anti-aircraft gun fire. Ten survivors of this incident were rescued by the destroyer USS Halsey Powell. Although it was an accident in U.S. sources, the Russian sources claims that on January 4, 1954, a P-2V-5 was shot down in the Yellow Sea near Darin. At the end of the same year, a Neptune taking off from Japan, ditched into the sea as a result of the fire of the Soviet MiG-17s. One in 1954, two in 1955 and one in 1956, four additional US P-2s were shot down by Soviet fighters. In 1964, an electronic signals intelligence model of Neptune flying over mainland China, and was shot down by a Chinese MiG-15. The US Army operated the OP-2E variant of the P-2 from 1967 until 1972 over Vietnam. Fitted with terrain avoidance radar in nose, Chaff dispensers, wing-mounted gun pods and waste guns these aircraft were used for especially observing over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which was a logistical system that ran from North Vietnam to South Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia. Another important user of the Neptune was Argentina. A P-2 of the Argentine Navy conducted first reconnaissance over the Falklands, in 1961. During the Operation Soberania, which was a planned Argentine military invasion of Chile, these aircraft used for observing Chilean naval activities. In 1982, the P-2s once again observed the Falklands environment, and collected valuable information for Argentine invasion. However, this Neptune gained its real reputation on May 2, 1982. 
The Arena LR-8 receiver of the aircraft detected D-band emissions from a Type 965 radar belonging to HMS Sheffield. However, its radar malfunctioned. After a hard work of the crew, it was possible to put it into operation, and the aircraft managed to determine the right position of the enemy. Using this information, Argentine superintendents managed to hit HMS Sheffield. The P-2s acquired by Brazil in 1958, took off from the USA and headed for the Salvador Air Base. One of these Neptunes was intercepted by two P-51 Mustangs and at the Havilland Vampire of the Dominican Republic Air Force. The Dominicans opened fire and forced the aircraft to land at the airbase at Santo Isidro Ro. The crew was allowed to continue on its flight after investigation. The Soviet intelligence ship Kosminavt Iri Gagarin was sent to gather information about Brazilian rocket launch program. After the Brazilian P-2 spotted the ship, she had to leave that area. French Neptunes were used during the Algerian war to monitor the western Mediterranean and also laid mines off the coast of Algeria. In 1976, near the Sakhalin Island, a Japanese P-2J was intercepted by a Soviet Su-15 which fired two air-to-air -air missiles at it. But the Japanese were lucky. The two missed their targets, and the Japanese aircraft was not damaged. In 1962, Indonesia attempted to secretly deploy naval commandos to Dutch New Guinea. But Dutch intelligence had discovered this plan. So, the P-2s of the Dutch naval aviation were sent to area to intercept three Indonesian boats. These boats opened fire on the aircraft. After that the Dutch destroyer HNLMS Evertsen responded and sank one of them. The other two fled. During the colonial independence wars, Portuguese Neptunes were used as bombers in Angola and Guinea-Bissau. Three Taiwanese Neptunes had been shot down by China between 1961 to 1964. The P-2 performed its heroic mission on many fronts of the First Cold War. Many aircraft were lost due to intensive use of dangerous missions. However, Neptune managed to make more gains than losses. He would probably be able to fly in the sky much longer if the more efficient turboprops did not replace the radial engines. Still, as in the Falklands War, it has proven its worth until the last moment. A few P-2 still fly in Australia and the USA, making fans of this beautiful plane happy. Thanks for watching our new video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.